So folks, uh, welcome to another, um, what do you call this? Another ECB uh, interest rate, uh, an ECB meeting and interest rate announcement uh, session. Now, I got to tell you guys, this is likely to be a boring um, session as far as the ECB is concerned. Um, why do we think that this is going to be boring from uh, the ECB's perspective? Because they're not likely to cut interest rates. Um, no one is, uh, none of the potential candidates for, for uh, funding, uh, for new funding, basically Spain and Italy, are in a hurry to tap the ESM uh, mechanism. So um, there's not going to be any discussion about more uh, measures on um, outright monetary transactions by the ECB. So essentially, this is one of those meetings where they have a quiet time. Of course, it's still important for us to listen to the to the press conference. Perhaps uh, we will hear Mario Draghi announce uh, something new with respect to the single um, banking authority for the Eurozone issue. We may hear comments on um, progress for the other distressed uh, economies in the Eurozone. But essentially, the bigger issues, your um, interest rate, uh, any movement in the interest rate, or um, people beginning to tap the OMT, um, that's out of the table for now. Uh, just a backgrounder, uh, what does this all mean? If there's no interest rate cut, then uh, there's no reason for us to expect any fundi-based sell-off in the euro. I'm not saying I'm not bearish in euro, just that I don't expect any sell-off that will be caused by a rate cut. What else? Um, again, Spain has yet to tap the ESM. So, the ECB is not likely to do anything as far as its uh, OMT program is concerned because governments can only tap the OMT facility of uh, the ECB if the governments first apply for some form of bailout from the ESM. And are governments going to apply for a bailout? Let's put it this way, unless you're talking about Greece, no one seems to be uh, in a hurry to look to, to get some money. Um, sure, there are issues that sounding Spain, but for the moment, the Spanish government can, lay, can, can raise as much money as it wants from the capital markets. Earlier in the day, we had the French government uh, selling new bonds. And guess what? Those bonds were sold at uh, the cheapest for uh, the 21-year period. Because essentially, money is available, money is flowing, that no one is in a hurry to be in the onus of uh, a bailout program right now in the Eurozone. So that said, much of our session would actually be about fundis, or at least about uh, other issues beyond monetary policy. Okay, so um, let's move on. Let's uh, take a look at the euro. If you have any question on the interest rate decision or uh, about monetary policy, of course, feel free to uh, tell us about it. Okay. Don't hesitate, just uh, raise any questions that you may have. It's just that um, we don't expect to get anything out of this uh, ECB announcement itself. Now let's look at the charts. 
And let's start um, by taking a look at our Euro. Um, if you've been uh, able to attend some of my sessions lately, I've been emphasizing on how bullish I am with respect to our Euro. Um, I continue to be bullish about the Euro, just that if you're thinking about um, what the heck do we do with uh, the euro today, my answer would be probably be not buying the euro. Okay? Um, why am I saying this? Let's put it this way, guys. Yesterday, we saw a sell-off in euro. That sell-off managed to close below the midpoint of the body for the preceding candle. Although our wick for yesterday's candle is uh, not inside the body, rather, although the wick of Tuesday's candle is not within the body of uh, Wednesday's, I could qualify what we have in our daily euro chart as a dark cloud cover. And given the subsequent sell-off, given the bearish divergence in our daily stochastic, I now think that for the moment, we have mean reversion risk in our euro from the daily picture. What is mean reversion? Mean reversion is basically when you find that um, prices are very, very far from the moving averages. When that happens, um, there's a tendency for prices to pull back to the moving average. Sometimes the pullback will be sharp. Sometimes uh, the moving average itself will uh, chase the price action. In this case, it seems to be that uh, we're going to get both. Your daily EMA lines are uh, rising sharply while we have that qualified shooting star from yesterday in EURUSD. So we have a bearish view for now in our euro. Um, what are the other things that I'd like to note? Well, I'd like to note where prices are. If you look at your uh, intraday picture, you'll find that uh, you're just below the previous uh, moderate um, support level, your 3075 region. I view this area as a potential rejection point for Euro, a possible place to look for a new bear market. At the moment, my indicators are mixed. MACD is down. Stochastic is crossing higher. So I'm not in a hurry to uh, take any action in our um, euro given that mixed picture. Let me see this from the hourly level. Hourly charts at this point are also mixed. So personally, as far as plans are concerned, we're not in a hurry to jump short. We don't have the signals to do anything. That said, we, however, will be keeping a bearish bias for the euro. Um, I guess I'd also want to see how the press conference turns out. As we said, it's not just about interest rates. There could be other issues for um, us to listen to. Okay, there could be other issues that uh, that Mario Draghi will be opening or talking on during the press conference. Okay, so guys, Euro for me has a technically bearish bias. As far as our interest rate decision is concerned, we do not expect to get anything. No rate cuts, no rate hikes, no OMT uh, action for the for the ECB at the moment. Okay, so of course, let me just uh, clear this up first. If somehow by some stroke of um, I don't know serendipity or uh, fate, you actually have a an unexpected rate cut by uh, the ECB later. What are you supposed to do? Well, 
Um, again, whenever there's a rate cut, the textbook response for us is to take the sell side of uh, the currency of the country which is uh, cutting its interest rates. So any rate cut that uh, you hear of would be an automatic um, excuse to jump short. The projected low for Euro is at uh, 30.17. We have a strong support at 30.19. A rate cut should be able to take prices down below the 30.19, 30.17 projected low level. A rate cut uh, to me would be good enough to possibly get our euro down to the daily EMA lines. Your 21 day EMA is around um, 29 uh, 54 for the moment. Um, okay, if you guys were around then the, you were monitoring the they cut from Australia and then the sudden rally of the Aussie, you have to be asking yourself, why are we planning on shorting rate cuts when uh, in Australia we had a rate cut and then the market rallied? Um, the main answer that I have for this is, uh, as far as the Australian case is concerned, market was already anticipating uh, a rate cut by the RBA. So, um, there wasn't much of a surprise for the market. In our case, forecast right now, projections right now, call for a rate cut in uh, the Eurozone, maybe only on the second quarter of next year. So, no one is uh, expecting any, action, any such action at this point. Okay, so, no rate cuts uh, expected so if we do get a surprise we're going to get or we're going to look for a big knee jerk reaction but as we said guys it is very unlikely that we will have a rate cut okay so we are bearish for now in the euro but after mean reversion when I find prices around our 21-day uh, EMA, I will revert to a bullish view of the euro. Why the heck is Mark confusing us? Why is he saying sell now and then uh, later we'll buy it? Let me put it uh, from this perspective. Um, our technical picture looks bearish for the moment. But in the long run, we've got plenty of argument to look for euro to strengthen at the moment um, there is no pressing debt issue for the eurozone okay so there's no talk about uh, Greece that's dominating the headlines at the moment the headlines in uh, for the market is dominated by stories about the US fiscal cliff. So because of this fiscal cliff problem in the US, I will focus on a buy and dip strategy for the Euro until the end of uh, the year or at least until uh, the fiscal cliff uh, issue is resolved. So guys, we're only temporarily bearish. We're only looking for that pullback um, today. And of course, if we get uh, a rate cut, then uh, we're going to get for an, uh, we're going to look for an even sharper sell-off in EUR USD. Now let's uh, move on. And where should we go to next? If you have any questions on anything, folks, feel free to raise them at any time. For now, let me take a look at uh, EUR JPY. Another interesting currency for us is your uh, Euro Yen. Why? What's with Euro Yen? Well, from the fundies, 
we've got uh, the Japanese elections uh, likely to push your EURJPY higher. Why? Well, let's put it this way, guys. Expectations right now calls for um, the LDP party in Japan to win the elections. If they win, their policy, their stated policy, is to call for unlimited monetary stimulus, which means that the Japanese uh, solution would be to just print and print money. Now, if you print and print money, what's the impact for the currency? As you print more money, you increase the supply of a currency, you make it just a little worth less. So, if the LDP wins, if Shinzo Abe wins, and his, uh, he manages to force the BOJ back under the wing of the MOF, which was the setup in the 70s, in the 60s, in the early 90s, if the BOJ becomes... Uh, or if the MOF is given uh, legislative uh, supervision over uh, the BOJ, that increases the possibility, the ability of um, the BOJ printing money, of the MOF uh, introducing unlimited monetary stimulus. So that's a case for the yen pairs rallying. Okay, the Japanese yen essentially losing ground, getting weaker. Another case is that, as we said, right now um, the eurozone issues are uh, in the back burner. So with eurozone uh, problems in the back burner then uh, we have a natural tendency to expect the euro to strengthen. So on one side, you have a currency that's weak, the Japanese yen, which we think will go, will push up across the board. On the other hand, um, we expect that uh, in the medium run, over the next few weeks, your um, euro will continue to be strong. So that combination tells me that I just have to be patient with euro yen, and eventually, it will give me a nice pop, maybe to uh, 11.43, my next strong resistance area. By the way, the Japanese elections are on December 16. But what about now? What are we supposed to do in Yuruyen? At the moment, you're stuck in a congestion. You have uh, cell signals in the Audi picture. Of course, if there's any uh, sudden rate cut, we will look for our uh, EURJPY to sell off. We can use uh, the break of um, 107.47 as an entry. The projected low for Euro Yen goes all the way down to 106.94. Indicator-wise, what are we seeing in Euro Yen? Looks like we have a bearish uh, set of signals from our 4-hour stochastic, a bearish divergence. In the dailies, uh, just like your Euro itself, you have a bearish divergence here. You're even poised to cross lower in your stochastic. From the earlies, uh, you have MACDs down, you have stochastics uh, also heading lower. So there's a lot of uh, technical argument for Euro-Yen uh, weakness. So guys, uh, questions about EUR-JPY. So we have a bearish view. We would um, like to use a break of uh, 107.47 before we can do anything for the sell side.
Okay. Um, let me get back to overview. Since this is all about the ECB, we'll uh, play with our uh, euro pairs first. Earlier, you had um, the BOE's own decision. Between the BOE and uh, the euro, the ECB, the ECB is uh, generally seen as uh, more hawkish than uh, the Bank of England. So our next chart should be our euro pound. What are we supposed to watch out for? Um, let me show you the big picture first for EUR GDP, guys. Big picture is this. This is your euro pound. This is the sell-off in euro pound since uh, people started speculating that the eurozone will collapse. Okay, people shifted the uh, real money to uh, the UK system back then. Now that uh, it's clear that the ECB, or rather the Eurozone, is not going to collapse and that the ECB is going to do all that it can to prevent such a thing as happening, we look at our EUR GBP and think we've sold off by quite a lot. And uh, we haven't even uh, pulled back to a third of it. So what am I saying? I'm saying that um, a good candidate for us uh, going forward would be to look for your EUR GBP bouncing, to look for your EUR GBP pushing past the 8155 area on a daily basis, and then look for a pullback to at least 80 to 64. Possibly up to your uh, 8512 region. Now let me just see technically what uh, do we have in uh, Euro Pound for now. Again, uh, between the BOE and uh, the ECB, the ECB seem to be more bullish, more hawkish than uh, the BOE. Um, okay, let me see the indicators and the lower time frames. In four hour charts, uh, what are we getting? Uh, in the daily charts, what are we getting? Looks like uh, I may be bullish, but uh, the charts are not cooperating. At the moment, we have a bearish divergence out of stochastic. Your MACD is poised to cross lower. Average range for Euro Pound is ridiculously tight. It's at 33 pips a day. So we're not going to do anything on a breakout. But I'd like to find our uh, next moderate uh, support for us to work with. The only number that really sticks out is at uh, 8075. I'd love to look at the possibility of using that as a possible bounce off point. We go into a day and uh, what are we seeing in EUR GBP right now? You have a conference of bears, your MACD is down, your uh, stochastic is oversold. Price action wise, you're uh, getting ready to ease off. Hourly, I also have a conference of bears. So I guess uh, for the moment, folks, uh, the more immediate bias is uh, for weakness in your euro.
Well, guys, so I guess um, for now there's no immediate buy for us in uh, our euro pound. I guess this is consistent with our immediate view from EURUSD, where again, uh, for the moment, we're looking for mean reversion place before uh, taking action. Potential buy, short term. Um, Gangsta, I'm assuming that you're talking about uh, Euro Pound. Or are you talking about another uh, currency pair? Or any currency pair? EG. Well, at the moment, um, we have an ongoing break lower. So I'm not about uh, to join the buy side of EUR GBP just yet. If we close the R still above your uh, 23.6 pip, then perhaps otherwise the only place that uh, I'd be willing to buy this from would be your 80.75 region. And again, if you play Euro Pound, it has to be uh, for a couple of days. It's not an interday uh, type of trade. So if you want to pick something up, 38.25 uh, would be a good candidate. By the time we get there, um, we should be oversold in our hourly stochastic. We are already oversold in our four-hour uh, stochastic. A combination of being oversold and having a moderate support to work with would make for a good uh, case of uh, going long. So for now, nothing immediate, not from here. The only place I'm willing to dump, uh, to go in is would be from 38 point of fib at 80.75. Of course, if there's a sudden rate hike, <laughs> I would uh, definitely be buying your euro. But that's even more impossible than a rate cut right now. Do you think uh, 1.3 is possible today? Well, um, my projected low for uh, EURUSD is at... Uh, oh, na, kung my surprise. <laughs> projected low is at uh, 30.17. I have a strong support at 30.19. So I'm not quite looking for 1.3 uh, today. It is possible, though. Um, we are in mean reversion mode for Euro at the moment. Uh, until we get uh, anywhere near 21-day EMA for today, that's 29.54. Of course, tomorrow that will be higher. But until we get to this uh, EMA line, I am not really a willing buyer. So today, 1.3, maybe not exactly 1.3, given my... Uh, Strong support at 30.19 and projected low at 30.17. But um, we should be able to get to 1.3 eventually. Maybe early in Asia tomorrow. Eventually, as I said, the only place I'd be willing to buy your euro again is if we come off the EMA lines. I just want to finish this mean reversion before I start uh, taking the buy side of Euro. All right, guys, ECB uh, leaves interest rate unchanged at 0 0.75. Okay, this is crazy because I know that inter Yeah, thank you, uh, admin. I'm seeing from Bloomberg it's 0.75 unchanged. It's supposed to be at 0.50. <laughs> I'm assuming that that's just a typo from them. Since no one really expected the rate hike. Now that would have been uh, something. 0.75. Why is it at 0.75? Oh yeah, sorry. I was actually looking at the forecast for the next six months. Sorry, guys. 
yeah, it's 0.75. I had my eye on uh, something else in my other screen. And uh, I was reading uh, 0.50, but that's actually a six-month forecast. My mistake there. Okay, so um, the ECB has made its decision. Again, um, we do not expect any uh, rate action from the ECB at least until uh, until um, the second half of uh, the, se the second quarter of uh, next year. Um, so, as far as this interest rate decision is concerned, we don't have any catalyst for uh, the euro to move. But remember, in 45 minutes, we're going to have a press conference. In that press conference, other issues could be raised. Like what? Like the timing for um, the unified banking uh, supervision. Everybody wants it to happen on January 1. Um, if it's going to take longer than that, it could be seen as uh, bad for uh, the euro. So, um, we're not out of the woods yet. What is going to be said in the press conference uh, could be a possible mover for the euro pairs. But let me move on. Let me move, uh, let me take a look at something. What is that something? Where is that something? Oh, there we go. Let me take a look at this. EURAUD. Now, what do we have in EURAUD? I know most people probably don't look at this chart. But um, we are getting to an interesting point in this chart. If you look at it, You've uh, pulled back to around 38.5. We also have your daily EMA lines there. You have a bearish uh, stochastic. Your MACD is even uh, topping off in uh, EUR AUD. Now let's compare Australian economy with uh, the European economy. Australia did uh, just cut rates uh, the other day. Um, instead of a sell-off in the Aussie, we actually rallied. We had a positive surprise in the jobs numbers. And that's really the reason why EURAUD has sold off today. Your uh, strong jobs data out of Australia. Other than that, though, is there any um, anything that really differentiates or that tells us that the Australian dollar, the Australian economy is that strong? As far as uh, I know, um, other economic releases have been bad lately. So if that's the case, I would view our sell-off today in Aussie as a one-off. I don't look at it as the start of any bear trend. So what am I saying? Um, I'm thinking we are around the minor support right now. I'd love to see prices around your moderate support at uh, 24, 22 first. You have 21 day EMA there. You have uh, 38.25 uh, around that area as well. I'd love to use this price point as a base this price region as a base for a bounce in uh, EUR AUD. We don't necessarily have to get to the EMA lines itself. Doesn't necessarily have to be 24.22. But we are near that price. We can now start looking for possible bullish reversal price action. Um, it looks like we're actually, oh, sorry. This is a new four-hour candle. So I guess I've got plenty of time to see how this latest four-hour candle will close. 
But if this gives me a hammer, I might start thinking maybe I can scale into the trade for EUR AUD. If this turns into a hammer. Let me go hourlies. Hourly charts uh, seems to be the same case. We are looking for a hammer to develop. So we're not necessarily eager or in a position to just uh, buy your EUR AUD. Ideally, we should be coming off. Uh, ideally, we should be coming off that um, 24, uh, 12, 24, uh, 22 area. But uh, if this hourly candle becomes a hammer, it might be worth our while trying to scale into the bullish trade. So what do we mean by trying to scale into the bullish trade? Say you trade um, two lots. Instead of uh, trading two lots, you trade half of it now and then you wait for the ideal entry point. You wait for your uh, 2412, 2422 area as uh, another place to start buying from. And then um, we'll just place a stop loss tightly under uh, 2412 for uh, both positions. So essentially, uh, a hammer is a nice uh, signal from PA, from price action, that says a potential bounce is happening. So we can scale into that uh, setup. We can take a small trade now following a hammer. And then uh, if prices actually don't jump up, we can just go buy again from uh, your ideal entry point. Of course, this isn't really for everybody. Um, if you have a widespread in your EURAUD, then it's not really going to be worth uh, intraday trading it. If you do consider uh, taking long on this one and uh, you do decide to just hold on to it, I'd say allow for at least, at most, two or three days. before you get um, any substantial uh, bounce in your AUD. Ultimately, we expect that your AUD will be heading uh, back towards the 2800 region. We'll be looking for um, maybe a push beyond that uh, previous swing high. Okay, let me get back to overview, guys. Any questions on anything else? If you have a question that's not related with Euro, I'm fine with that. Just uh, feel free to raise them. Ah, dollar yen. Well, dollar yen is. Uh, I'm actually looking for something here. I'm looking for this in dollar yen. You look at it in the weekly scale, and um, we, we have this double bottom forming. I know that dollar yen is a pain to trade. You have uh, very small ranges. But we are going to, again, we're going to have that election in Japan and, uh, on December 16. And uh, my view is if the LDP wins and Shinzo Abe's policies will be adopted for unlimited uh, stimulus, then at the very least we're looking to trigger this double bottom in the weekly chart. Going to the into the elections, I am actually willing to take the buy side if I see dollar yen from uh, 81.69, or if there's a break of your uh, 82.93 area. Give me a daily close above 82.93, and I will buy. 
give me prices at 81.69 and I will buy your dollar yen. Um, again, target for me is if uh, Shinzo Abe wins, I would look for this double bottom to be triggered. My objective, look at this number, 9403, 38.2 fib. Yup, I'm bullish, bullish, bullish. Weakening a currency is easy. It's making a currency strong that's difficult. Weakening a currency is easy and um, if Shinzo Abe wins and he forces the BOJ to adopt unlimited uh, stimulus, he can easily push that up to 94. Maybe even 100 by uh, by summer next year. Um, okay, let's take a look a quick look at cable. Cable is actually uh, an interesting chart. In your dailies, you have this um, you have this I would actually call it a, a gravestone doji from uh, Tuesday and then uh, another long week from yesterday. Um, right now, among my plans for cable is I view this area as a potential entry point for shorts. Your uh, 61.8 tribute placement, 61.24, with a stop loss above the false breakout high of 61.30. So a stop loss at 61.40. Why am I bearish in cable? Because essentially, essentially because of price action. Um, your candle suggests that the bullish momentum has been lost. Your indicators suggest that bullish momentum has been lost. It's just a question of uh, can I actually get a, a, a close below 60.86 in the higher time frames? Four hour chart or uh, maybe daily chart. If I can't get that, then I will settle for a near technical rejection from that 61.24 area. Indicator wise, you're mixed in the four hour level. You have uh, a mixed set of signals in the hourly time frame. So it is unlikely that you will be able to generate a follow through rally given how mixed things are and given that there's really no single good news for us to talk about as far as uh, the UK is concerned. So this is a sell on rallies. If uh, we find ourselves around 61.24, I'll join the bears. Honestly, I'm actually short in uh, cable, but not from a good price. Uh, I got tired of waiting and uh, I shorted it at uh, 61.11 earlier. And now I'm just uh, crossing my fingers that uh, this gets to 6086 first before it gets to my uh, stop at uh, 6130. There's actually another uh, interesting chart, guys. Your Aussie. Aussie is uh, trying to rally. I think I've mentioned this before. Australia has been, uh, or the Aussie dollar has been uh, classified as a reserve currency by uh, the IMF. Because of this, um, you're likely to see central banks buying up uh, Australian dollars. And central banks tend to hold on to currencies uh, in the long run. So there's a good fundy argument for a rally in Aussie despite the weaker economic data that we have seen lately. At least uh, good enough uh, in the argument to look for a test of your 106.24 price point eventually. Although for now my plan for Aussie is uh, if I get this, uh, if I see this around the 105.19 area, a moderate assistance for me, I am looking at a possible rejection from that level a possible short from that area.
All right. Um, any more questions, concerns uh, for us to look into, guys? Before we run out of time. OCN. Well, it's interesting. We are uh, just under our 8643 resistance level, a moderate resistance area. Can we call this a multiple top from here? My projected high for AUDJPY is 8664, above 8643. If I look at my indicators, um, okay, guys, and we're losing time. Uh, essentially, you need to close above uh, 8643 if you want to buy it. If you don't get a close above 8643, I would look for um, a rejection from 8643, maybe during the uh, at the close of the European market. Guys, thank you for attending. Um, See you next time.